This message has been brought to you freely by Ecclesia Kingdom Movement. To support our ministry and partner with us to increase our impact across the world, reach more people and take advantage of more platforms, we encourage you to consider making a monthly gift of any amount or one-time gift towards the work of the gospel. We'd like to thank you in advance for your support and we value your partnership. I want you to cry out to the Lord tonight and say, Lord, pour upon me grace to seek your face. Open your mouth and pray. Send a baptism of prayer. Send a baptism of prayer, oh God. If you've never had a prayer altar before, like I've spoken about, say, God, give me one. If you have one that has been attacked, say, God, restore it. If it's still there, but you can sense it's under attack, say, God, defend it. Like I said, I'm not talking about prayer to ask. One thing have I desired, this one thing I will seek, says the Bible. To dwell in your courts, behold your beauty, and inquire in your presence. Not to ask for stuff. Whatever has become more important, more pertinent than pursuing you. Jobs, spouses, children, business, even ministry. Makaraba sandala bahaya. Whatever is stealing my brazen altar. In my pain. In my frustration. In my circumstances. Help me to find that hiding place of prayer. Help me to seek your face. There's a world around us, oh God. It will not respond to planned evangelism, conferences. It will only respond to the fire of God in the hearts of a people. Who have been set ablaze in the place of prayer. People in pursuit of his glory. Father would you visit this room tonight. Would you baptize the people tonight. Would you find an army, oh God, that will stay on its knees? Not just to ask even for you to reach the lost, but to ask for you to reach us. Till we have no cause but to reach the lost. Would you return the sense of your awe and your reverence? Father, even right now, oh God, would you brand this on our hearts? That we would not whisper, oh God, but that it would erupt within us with violence. Would you stare the waters, oh God? You said if my people call by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, you would hear from heaven. Father, would you hear tonight? Would you help us to cast our cares upon you? For you care for us. And not let the cares of this world choke the seed of prayer and pursuit. Oh, I wish I had a people tonight who would pray with me. For the grace to pray. For the grace to seek the Lord till he speaks to us. About every affair of our lives. Including about the dying world around us. 
This is not a whispering prayer point, saints. This is not a whispering prayer point, saints. God, would you send the wind of your spirit? Would you send the wind of your spirit? Would you blow through this room tonight, oh God? Would you find us in the wilderness of Kadesh? Would your voice break the cedars of Lebanon? Let like John the Baptist. Would you find us by your word in the wilderness? Till we become a people who eat locusts and wild honey. Would you brand us? Would you mark us with your desire? Would you reintroduce yourself to us? Would you open our eyes of our understanding and enlighten us to see the hope of our calling, your power, and your inheritance within us? Would you fill us with wisdom and all spiritual knowledge that we may work, w- walk worthy of our calling? Would you declare us to be the sons of God like you did Jesus with power according to the spirit of holiness like elijah would you wrap us up in our mantle would you go through the fire the the earthquake and the wind and speak with the still small voice would you give instructions would you give a fresh touch would you give a fresh out would you drive us to our knees in prayer until you reveal your glory to us would you grant us the grace once again to worship with angels that when we gather to pray and worship it's not just oh god it's not a planner it's not a structure it's not a system would you peel back the veil oh god Like 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 says, 17 and 18, the Lord is that spirit. And as we with open face behold, as in a glass, we will be transformed. Would you help us, O God, to see your glory? Would you reveal your image to us and change us from one level to another? Take the keyboard up a little bit for me, please. a hold of my heart oh God arrest my spirit oh God constrain me to pray and then cancel constrain me oh God arrest me father like Paul on the road to Damascus waylay me ambush me my eyes to see what you really are to me I don't want to take advantage of your grace lead me to your holy place would you take me behind the veil would you take me behind the veil past the crowds of people to the holy Lord I hunger and thirst for your righteousness but it's only found in one place Take me in. Take me in. Take me in. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in. Take the coal. Cleanse my lips. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are God. You're altogether lovely. Altogether worthy altogether wonderful to me when the music fades and all is stripped away oh God help me to simply come help me to bring you more than a song help me to bring you more than a song I'm coming back to the heart of worship I'm coming back to the heart of prayer I'm coming back to the heart of pursuit. I'm coming back to the heart of seeking you, O oh God. Whatever it costs, whatever it takes, 
whatever I have to lose oh God if a baby needs to die like David so be it but I will be glad when they say to me come to the house of the Lord father if it means letting some stuff go if I need to take a step back if I need to lose some stuff if I need to if I need to some areas oh God if I need to become a laughing stock even if people don't understand Lord I cannot maintain anymore I am seeking new fresh I'm not seeking to hold on to stuff yesterday if yesterday has to die for today to be born for tomorrow to emerge so be it If I need to lose relationships. If I need to walk away from stuff. To keep me sane. So I can seek you. So be it. If I need to stop my ears. And stop worrying about what people say. So be it. Ilando shatala. Sekindo rimatalabata. Rokondo bonde ribaraba shatalaba. I count it all dung. Parabo shata. E peri ando sotoroma mosiro boya. That I may know you and the power of your resurrection. E peri na na mosi ende le bobosha. Excellency. O tori na na. I want to apprehend that for which I was apprehended. I want to discover what discovered me i want to arrest the god that arrested me send me a burning bush oh god send me a burning bush oh god cause me to stop turn aside and see that i may hear I tear up my I tear up I tear up my structure I tear up my agenda mess me up oh God in this season mess me up oh God arrest me oh Lord take a hold of me drive me to my knees Hallelujah. I preached this word for the first time in 2006. I wish I knew then what I know now. Ezekiel chapter 1. Let's go there very quickly. We're going to pray tonight. It's only 2 o'clock. Amen. I just passed 2, 20 past 2. We have a long way to go. Amen. Tell you what, we have a long way to go. We are going to pray tonight. Ezekiel chapter 1. The Bible says, Ezekiel 1 verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the 4th month, in the 5th day of the month. Look, as I was among the captives by the river Chabar. Ezekiel was a priest who had been taken into captivity into the land of Babylon he was in pain frustration probably seen his loved ones die he was in captivity by the river Chabar and the Bible says that the heavens opened and I saw visions of God it is possible for heavens to open past the chance in the midst of captivity said the heavens opened and I saw visions of God verse 3 says the word of the Lord came expressly now he's talking about himself in third person unto Ezekiel the priest the son of Buzi in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chabar and the hand of the Lord was there upon him notice the progression the heavens opened 
and he saw. When he saw, the word of God came to him and the hand of the Lord was upon him. The hand of the Lord upon you is tied to what you see. I want you to pray tonight and say, Lord, open my heavens, even in my captivity. Say, Lord, open my heavens, even in my captivity, oh God. Help me to see visions of you again. Help me to dream again. Restore my sense of awe. Restore my sense of perspective. Restore my sense of desire. I want to see you again, oh God. Come on, tell him, tell him, tell him. I've been praying that all this week, oh God. Let my prayer altar become a wonderful place again, like a child's coloring book, full of color and vibrancy and life. Let prayer not be a chore anymore. Let it be a time of encounter, a time of refreshing, a time of renewal, oh Lord. Nah, 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 nah. Come on, somebody open your mouth and pray, pray, pray. No more silent witnesses. I'm not asking you to meditate. I'm asking you to pray. Open your mouth and say it. Declare it. Open the heavens over me, oh God. Cause me to see visions of you. Cause me to see visions of you. Let your word come to me. Let your hand be upon me. Hallelujah. Let me explain what it means for the word of God to come to you. Many of us can remember times in our lives where we would just be going through the day. And this prophetic revelation would just hit us. The scripture would just attack us and unfold. The answer to this question we've been asking would come. You know why? Because you'd soaked yourself in prayer in the presence of God. And when you stepped out of your prayer closet, you took that atmosphere with you. Amen. Amen. You were in the bus, but you were still carrying the fragrance of heaven. At your job, but still carrying the fragrance of prayer. And so the word of God could come to you. God could just move on you spontaneously. Stop and pray for that person. Stop and say this to that person. The answer to this problem will just hit you. But it's been a long time, hasn't it been? Because the wells have run dry. You're running on, it's like a car. You use the reserve tank, then you fill it back, then you use it. So the petrol never goes above zero. You're constantly in reserve. Say, Lord, fill my cup. Tell him, say, fill my cup. See, I come to you tonight. Fill my cup. Go on, tell him, tell him, tell him. Say, Lord, fill my cup, oh Lord. Fill my cup, oh Lord. I lift it up. Quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Feel me till I want no more. Feel me till I want no more. Feel me till I want no more. Feel me till I want. I want, I want no more, Lord. Yeah. Cool. Remember those days where if you woke up in the morning and left your house before praying for an hour, you just didn't feel right. I'm not talking about condemnation, but you felt compelled to give God quality time. But now you can go days and still be comfortable. Weeks and say God understands. You provide the fire for me. Let it burn tonight forever. 
Let it burn tonight forever. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the fire for me. Let it burn tonight forever. Now provide the sacrifice. You provide the fire for me. Let it burn tonight forever. Let it burn tonight forever. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the fire for me. Let it burn tonight forever and now forever be chasing after you and I'll be chasing after you cause I'll forever be I'll forever be chasing after you and I'll be chasing after you Cause I'll forever be, I'll forever be chasing after you. And I'll be chasing after you. And we'll forever be, we'll forever be chasing after you. We'll be chasing after you. And I want you to go before the Lord tonight. The Bible says to cast our cares upon him. For he cares for us. And cares are one of the most dangerous impediments to the altar of consecration. Let me give you a personal example for my life. Only now am I starting to reach out to some people again. That I love and I care about. But I told my wife a few months ago. Early this year, I said you know what. I need some sanity. I need some peace. To find my God again. And the care. Of sons and daughters in the spirit. Who were in coat. How did I put it this way. I told, I told some of them. I said see. I said. Your backsliding or whatever what you want to call it the the damage to your relationship with God is damaging mine does that make sense I'm spending too much time worrying about you and your mess that it's destroying my altar of consecration I said I need some time to fix me if you want to go to hell fine I told him called him to my office I said if you want to go to hell the Lord be with you Amen. But for now, I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to check up on you. I'm not even going to pray for you for a while. I stressed for a while, for a season, because it was a care. Does that make sense? It had become an idol. My love for my people had become an idol. In some other cases, like I I told you, I was so concerned about people understanding that I was a good person. Amen. I wanted people to, uh, you know what I'm talking about? I'm not a monster, I'm not a bad person. You know, and, and it was eating me up till I was almost having ulcers. So I said, you know what? For, for a season to heaven with all this. Amen? Sometimes as a pastor, you're so busy trying to keep your ministry together. You might need to say, you know what? Whoever goes, goes. Whoever leaves, leaves. Whoever walks out on you, your friends, family, whatever it is, amen. Sometimes you could be holding on to, to God. You could be a marriage could be an idol. Your marriage could be troubled, and you're so worried about saving the marriage, and you might need for a season to say whatever happens. Don't get me wrong. I I do not. I do not. I am not a proponent of divorce, amen. But sometimes it might that thing might need to get worse for a while while you get better. Does that make sense? 
you might need to take a break. In basketball, when you substitute, you can come in and out anyhow you want. Sometimes the team is losing, but the coach has to take his best players out to give them a rest. Does that make sense? Because they are tired. So we're down by five points and the coach is subbing me out. I remember when I was a student, I said, oh, coach, what's wrong? We need to win this game. And one day my coach pulled, come past the Sam. My coach pulled me aside and said, let me day. If we can keep this game within five points with two minutes to go, I know you can bail us out. He says, but when those two minutes come, I need you to have breath and legs to make those shots. So I would sit down and watch a one-point deficit grow to nine points so that when I came back in, I had the energy to try and make it up. Sometimes you have to withdraw from a battle to recuperate. Does that make sense? To go back and fight it. And whatever happens while you're resting, let it happen. Whoever needs to die, let them die. Like Lazarus, we'll call them back. Amen? Whatever business has to die, let it die. Whatever ministry has to die, let it die. Now, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you walk away from your responsibility. I'm saying you don't let that responsibility destroy the source of your strength. Does that make sense? I'm not saying you walk out of the marriage. I'm not saying you walk away from the ministry or the business. I'm saying while you're in it, you say this is God's time. Whatever else will die, let it die. Amen. Let it die. Whatever you lose pursuing God, he will restore. I want you to pray and say, God, whatever the cares of my life are, I cast them unto you. Talk to him. For you care for me. If the landlord evicts me, let him evict me. But I'll pray. Because my worrying about where to find the money is not bringing the money anyway, right? So tell the Lord, if I need to praise you from a cardboard box at the back of the train station, so be it. But I will not let me worrying about the rent steal my altar of prayer. If I'm kicked out of school for not paying my fees, so be it. But my worrying is not paying the fees anyway. But it's stealing my access to the voice that can tell me how to get the money. Whoever needs to walk out of my church, let them go. If I rediscover my spark, maybe they'll come back. Maybe they won't. God bless them. Maybe they're called to go somewhere else in this season. But I'm not going to sit down there trying to fix it so much that it destroys my... No, 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 no. I cast my cares upon you. Cast my cares upon you. I cast the bailiff letters upon you. I cast the bills upon you. I cast the rejections for jobs upon you. I passed the letter in which he broke up with me upon you. I cast the text she sent me when she broke my heart upon you. I cast the insults of my parents or my spouses upon you. Or even my children. I cast the misinterpretation. The misunderstanding. Only you can understand me anyway. It is in you I find my identity. Man was never meant to understand me. Man was never meant to be there for me. cast it upon you oh God I cast it upon you oh Lord every weight every weight every weight every weight I want to run my race every weight every weight every weight the weight of failure the weight of past circumstances the weight of slander the weight of gossip the weight of misunderstanding the weight of condemnation from my own mistakes the weight of sin 
the weight of depression, the weight of lack, the weight of frustration, the weight of confusion, the weight of witchcraft, the weight of anxiety. I cast it off, oh God. Cast it off, oh God. Cast it aside, oh God. I run. God, I run. God, I run. I run. I run. I run to you. Not from you, but to you. Not from you, but to you. You are not angry with me. You understand. You understand. You don't judge me, Lord. You will not judge me, Lord. Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. The next thing you're going to pray about, and I really want to hear you pray about this one, is the spirit of condemnation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 7, the last few verses, the good I want to do, I can't do. The evil I shouldn't do, I find myself doing. So I find the Lord present work in me, that when I would do good, evil is present therein. And then Paul ends up by saying, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? And I find out that nowhere is this more prevalent than in the place of prayer and seeking the Lord. I know I should pray. I know I should read my Bible. I know I should be on fire for God, but I'm not. The TV I don't want to watch, I'm watching. The internet I don't want to read, I'm reading. But I can't pray. I can't see God's face. And then it becomes a depressive cycle. You're a bad Christian. You miss your quiet time. You're a horrible person. And rather than that condemnation making you more spiritual, it drives you further and further away. Talk to me. You tell yourself, I'm going too fast. And then you laugh at yourself. Because you tell yourself, but you know you won't last past day two. Condemnation. And you think, you know what, if I guilt trip myself enough, if I tell myself what a horrible person I am enough, then it will inspire me. It won't. Has it worked so far? And it won't ever work. Because God is not an author of condemnation. God convicts. Conviction means he shows you your fault. And then he gives you grace to fix it. I want you to pray and say, Lord, every spirit of condemnation, every cycle of condemnation that has systematically damaged my pursuit of you, remove from me. Open your mouth and pray. I let go of that spirit of condemnation. I'm not an evil person. I have a father. He knows my name. He knows my frame. He understands my frailties and my pain. God, you see my heart. You know I want to love you. You know I want to seek you. You know I want to chase you. Give me grace. Not condemnation. Give me grace. Give me grace. I am not a failure. I am not a failure. I am not a failure. Tell yourself I am not a failure. I am not a failure. I'm not a bastard. I have a father who loves me, who understands. The right, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I am a man, a woman of prayer. I am a person of pursuit. The lines are falling for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. The passion is is returning. The fire is being restored. The zeal is coming back. The love, the joy of the Lord is my strength one more time. Oh yes, I am empowered to pray. Say it, I'm empowered to pursue the Lord. I will seek the Lord till he rains down righteousness upon me. I will break up my fallow ground and I will seek the Lord. I will do it this time. (laughs) Yes, I will make it this time. It will work in this season.
Karalababa Sandelebo Shana la Mande Sururumuna la Mande Ryoko Sana la Mande Shinere le Muna la Nande Shanele la Nande Uyara la Nande Shinele la Nande Yara la Bos Yere le Bosa Sururubo Shana la Bosa Shinele le Bos Yana la Mande le Bosa Hallelujah. Now I want you to get in groups of three. Get in groups of three. We're going to wail before the Lord in a few seconds. I remember when we started EKC. Like I said, I told my mentors that the Lord had called me to start a church that was built on prayer, worship, pursuit of God and the manifestation of his glory. That or nothing else, simple and undiluted. And they said something to the effect of it won't work. I said, I'll, I'll show you. So we started, and you know, and it was working for a while. And then you know what happened? People began to complain. There's too many things going on. There's too much plan. Service is too loudy. You know what I mean? It's still spontaneous. And gradually you don't realize as a leader, but 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 <laughs> like Moses, Moses told God, the people are wearing me out. Yeah. They're wearing me out. You know what it means to wear something out? It means to rub on it till it starts to erode. So gradually, you know, or I'll give you an example. That happens to many preachers. You hold, or you, 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 I mean, you're doing this wonderful work you believe for the Lord. And then it's just going along. Someone else is telling stories, and bam. You know? You fast, pray, call a gathering, people pursue God, and God moves. 100 people show up. Somebody gathers comedians. 10,000 people show up. It gets discouraging, doesn't it? So the Bible says, be not weary in well-doing. Or, let me bring it out to your personal level. You're praying for stuff and you can't see the response. You're praying for your loved one's salvations and they get more and saved by the day. The Bible says, you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, you might obtain the promise. So after doing the will of God, there still needs to be patience. And what happens is that patience period can wear on you to a place where you become weary in well-doing. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? You got to learn to have... Ton- I told God this afternoon while I was praying. I said, God, give me godly tunnel vision. There's bad tunnel vision. That means you can't see what's wrong with you. You can't see other people's perspectives. The world starts and that's not what I'm talking about. But there's good tunnel vision that says it's irrelevant what anybody else says what anybody else is doing or not doing this is my lane this is what God has said to me now in your groups of three and please I don't see if I hear you whispering I might drop this mic and go home I have an hour to drive back to my house amen amen and I have a four hour trip to church on Sunday and four hours back amen I could do with all the sleep I can get so if you're going to go Irisi Irisi Shamblem please let's just say the grace now and go home but I want you to pray and say Lord in my brother and my sister's lives in my life you know where we missed it you know the junction at which we took the wrong turn you know what caused the distraction what caused the frustration what caused the the, whatever it was Father fix it open your mouth and pray say Father meet, meet us at the place where it went wrong Restore what was stolen. Renew what was lost. Pastor Blessed Michael, you and I can be in a group of three. We can pray for each other. Father, restore. Heal that wound. Address that insecurity. Renew that heart.
that lie of the devil that it won't work. Restore our confidence, oh God. Restore our zeal. Restore our passion. Remove the fear of failure. Remove the fear of failure, oh God. Remove the scars of the wounds of the past. Help us to seek you. To seek you till you rain down righteousness on us. Help us to seek you, O oh God. Severe what you need to severe. Remove what you need to remove. Distance what you need to distance. Repair what you need to repair. However it needs to go, do it Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Now this prayer point this prayer point is specifically for pastors and leaders but at least that's how I'm hearing it. But feel free to apply it as it applies to you. Feel free to adjust it to your circumstance. Let me give an example. In the midst of all this, you know, I'll give an example. I got so frustrated that I thought, you know what? <sighs> Who wants to drive I'll give you an example. I'll just give you an example now. You know, people are like there's this and there's that and there's this and there's that and there's this and there's that. And there's this and there's that, and there's that. Like, you know what? It's okay. You don't need to come. In some cases, you, you begin to shut down some things. Then somebody is angry with me and says, I was planning to drive four hours to a place or from a place to come for a threshing floor. And that month you canceled it. I'm like, hold on a second. There's somebody who leaves five minutes from the building who is giving me stress and discouraging me. But there's somebody four hours away who my stress is robbing of an encounter with God. Does that make sense? At the same time as one person is cutting me off out of their life, another person on the other side of the world is... is, is and, I, and this is what happens your scars damage you for your future does that make sense I had people I kept on hold for a year said Lord said I should connect to you I don't want you oh I want you to be my father I'm not interested does that make sense not that I didn't know God God, I mean, God made it very clear yes I did send that person to you but the scar is there does that make sense? The scars there. Same thing with prayer. Like I said, you look at the damage and you think, what's the point? If I start praying again, it'll get my hopes up again. Then I'll fail again and I'll feel more condemned next time. Pastors, leaders, Elders, the body of Christ is the one place that doesn't elect its leaders for a good reason. 
We're answerable to God for the people, but we're not answerable to the people. God has called us to the people, but the people did not call us. Amen? And we cannot reduce the instructions of God to the agenda of man. Does that make sense? We cannot let man's opinion subconsciously and man's pressure adjust our vision. It must be presented on dilute. Hallelujah. For instance, I think it's on the floor somewhere, I don't know. For instance, if the Lord's, it's here. Here. If God calls for a three day, 72 hour straight fast, don't turn it into a one day prayer meeting. Does that make sense? Call the fast. If only you show up, great. Fast and go home. God calls for a 21 day prayer meeting, don't make it three days. God calls for a four hour service, don't make it two and a half. You know why? The same people who are attacking you that it's too long will turn around and attack you when it's too short. Someone will always be offended. Someone will not agree with you. Amen. Does that make sense? That husband or wife that's telling you you pray too long when you stop praying will tell you that they've noticed you're dry. I don't mean in a bad way. It happened to me. When I met my wife, she used to joke and say you are too this you're too that all your jokes are spiritual you're you know are you I forgot, I forgot what was it john the baptist or something she used to call me the same wife who used to complain you don't have time for me you're always praying one day told me said oh boy you know so they say where i come from they say oh boy he said you don't pray again no i looked at her i said ish no i'm not saying from you it was painful she said, I remember those days when you would just walk out of the living room in a group of people and then I'd come and find you praying in a room somewhere. I said, but you used to stress my wife. I said, but you used to say, hey, well, you know, I wanted attention, but, but now, you know, you don't pray again like you used to. No, I don't feel, I'm like, eh. So for the next few weeks, I'll be like, see, I'm praying, no. Oh. I'm reading my Bible, oh. See me, oh. Don't let any human being dictate the pace and intensity of your altar. Does that make sense? No. It is you and God. Before him you stand and before him you rise. And God forbid, before him you will not fall like the Bible says. Before him you rise and you fall. I want you to pray and say, Lord, wherever outside influences have damaged my altar... Repair my heart. Open your mouth and pray. People have said things like, you need to apply wisdom. Wisdom. Whatever wisdom damages your altar of consecration is foolishness. Paul said, I will spend and be spent for the gospel. I will drive as far as I need to drive, give as much as I need to give, pray as long as I... There's no wisdom attached to the things of God. And by wisdom, what I mean is, there's no rational... You don't ration your zeal. That's not wisdom. Because the same people will mock you. The same Delilah that seduced you will mock you when your strength is gone. The same person that damaged your altar with God will turn around and say, now you're just a mere man like Delilah said to Samson. Say, God, wherever any external influence damaged my brother or sister's altar, please make sure you're holding someone's hand. Make sure you're holding hands in groups. Say, Father, restore. Father, restore. Come on, I want you to pray. Say, Father, restore. Father, restore in the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, restore. Restore. Restore, restore. Renew, restore. Come on. Renew and restore. Lambre Katalahaya. Renew and restore, O God. Shodorobobo Satalahaya. Renew and restore. Renew and restore, O God. Renew and restore. Renew and restore in the name of Jesus. Renew and restore. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now the Lord was showing me that for some of us, the attack was occultic. It was demonic. Satan said, you know what? I need to get that one off the altar of prayer. Otherwise my kingdom won't have peace. In some cases, some of the problems you have faced have been demonically induced. In fact, in some cases, God was showing me a few months ago, some of the people who come into your life are demonic, demonically sent. Amen? 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 Especially as a pastor, you've got to be very careful. Not everybody who, need, who supposedly needs your help is sent by God. If you notice that in trying to assist someone... Now... There's a difference between being drained and being sucked. Ministry will drain you. But if you find out that somebody's issues are having a destructive effect on your faith. Does that make sense? When you pray for them and counsel them, you feel like... Does that make sense? what I'm talking about. It, it damages your faith. Your, it's just like this person is a cancer. I don't mean in a bad way now, but I'll give an example. There's a person who I met years ago... When we first started EKC and, and, and I was almost losing faith in God based on what was going on with them. Does that make sense? Every time I wanted to pray, I felt this. Uh, and God said, son, did you ask me whether or not I sent that person to you? So I had to make a difficult, I said, I just started avoiding the person. And my prayer life picked up immediately. But for some of us, it's even more demonic. Some of us have demonic spirits assigned to stop us from praying. Demonic agenda assigned to stop us from praying. Some of the sicknesses and diseases we face are demonic. Stop us from seeking the Lord. I want you to scream and say, Lord, your word says no divination against Jacob. No enchantments against Israel. Every satanic messenger that has been assigned to attack my altar of consecration. Say, Lord, judge. Come on, hold hands. Say, God, judge. Let your wrath fall. Every satanic messenger, demonic or human, assigned to destroy the altar of prayer in my life, in my church. In my pastor's life, in my husband's life, in my wife's life, in my leader's life, in my mother or father's life. Father, destroy in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, judge and destroy. Visit every worker of iniquity with the judgment of the Lord tonight. Visit every altar of iniquity wherever they have gathered to tie down the purposes of God concerning me answer by fire say God answer by fire answer by fire 
answer by fire, O oh Lord. Contend with those that contend with me. Contend with those that contend with me. Fire. 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 Rokotobo shebere raba salalaba ya. Nanda raba baba ba salalabo bo 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 shai. Hallelujah. 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 David says in Isaiah or Psalm fifty one. Create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Now that talks about sin. It says, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Take not your spirit from me. Then it says, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Then I can teach sinners your ways and transgressors your precepts. Evangelism is very, very difficult when you are not enjoying the joy of your salvation. And so is prayer. I can usually measure the health of a Christian's life by his prayer life and his outreach life. How is your intimacy with God? And how is your out? pouring or that intimacy for many of us we have lost the joy of our salvation we love God too much to backslide <laughs> we know too much to go back or we're afraid Peter will kill us or Pastor Shepherds will shoot us or Pastor Blessing will have us for breakfast but left to our devices we'd rather have we'd, 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 we're, it's not from here it's from here it's muscle memory but there's no more fire there's no more zeal there's no more joy Now, I want us to pray for yourself and the person in your circle and say, Lord, restore the joy of our salvation. Open your mouth and pray. Restore that zeal. Restore that joy. Restore that passion. Restore that oomph, that get up and go. Restore that spark of revival. Come on, restore, restore, restore. Help us to love you again. To breathe again. Let it become a theme of overflow. Restore the overflow. Help us to live in the overflow again. Help us to live in the overflow again. The overflow of your glory. The overflow of your power. The overflow of your love. The overflow of your life. Eat, breathe on us again. Breathe on us again the breath of life. Breathe on us again the breath of life, O God. Breathe on us again, 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 O God. Breathe, 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 breathe. Spirit of the living God, breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Spirit of the living God, breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Breathe, oh God. Breathe, breathe, breathe. breathe. Till prayer becomes a thing of the light. Till witnessing becomes a thing of joy and burden. Not a thing of religion and compulsion. Sudiane, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to break hands for this next prayer point. But I hope this will be the loudest one of the night so far. 
I share with you a little snippet, a tiny itty bitty bit about my personal battle with depression. Well, three weeks ago, the Lord said, son, call it by its name. You're not down. You're not discouraged. You're depressed. And I realized that this is a war I've been fighting since I was a teenager. Now, some of you might not understand what this is about. In that case, just stretch your hands and pray for the rest of us. But some of us know what it means, like I said, to wrestle a bear of darkness. Where you feel paralyzed. You don't want to get up. You don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to go anywhere. You can't do anything. Your productivity declines or becomes zero. You can stare at a Bible for 30 minutes and not understand what you're reading. Not because it's too difficult. Just who knows what I'm talking about? You become a zombie for days on end. Sometimes you don't even want to have your bath. Don't want to brush your teeth. Don't want to change your sheets. Your own child can be crying and you don't have the energy to pick them up. Who knows what I'm talking about? It's called a spirit of heaviness. It is a demon. Amen. It's not clinical. It is demonic. I want you to pray for yourself. Now, if you don't ever struggle with this, that's fine. Pray for me. Just stretch your hands this way. Amen. The Lord will will bless you. But if it's a battle that you have dealt with or deal with from time to time, I want you to lift up your hands to God and cry for help. Say, Lord, fight this spirit of heaviness for me. Like Dion Kipping sang, this is what I need you to do. Fight this battle for me. Let your power fall when your name is called. Prove the doubt is wrong. You're still mighty and strong. This is what I need you to do. Need you to do, need you to do. The Bible says God is the one who delivers his people from enemies too great and powerful for them. You see, it is not a thing of shame to admit your weakness. God, this is stronger than me. It is stronger than me. This is not an enemy. I have the capacity in myself to defeat. Fight this spirit on my behalf, oh God. Let your blood shield me. Let your joy be my strength. Give me the garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness, oh God, you do it for me. 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 Yes, depression uses your pain. It uses circumstances. It uses mistakes. But it's demonic. Yes, you're depressed because your rent is due. But it's not the rent keeping you paralyzed. There's a demonic spirit taking advantage of your problem and sucking the life out of you damaging your ability to talk to your father father tonight we curse that spirit come on pray say father we curse the spirit of depression tonight we curse the spirit of heaviness tonight we break its hold over God's people over everyone here listening by the phone Everyone who is a member of this house, this family, around the world who couldn't make it tonight. We destroy that python. We crush the head of the serpent. Let there be light in the midst of the darkness. Let there be light, oh God. Let there be light, O God. Let there be light, O God. Let there be light, Lord Jesus. Let there be light, Lord. Oh, yadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
Kila la basante Oh na 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 su ke obore paro shore de Su ni na na ma se shore Hallelujah I just heard the Lord say this to me prophetically He said to attack the spirit of the serpent now let me explain. There's two types of serpents you can have in the realm of the spirit. You can have a python and you can have a boar constrictor. Pythons will expand to swallow you. No matter how big the prey is, the python will expand to take it into itself. Sin is a python. Does that make sense? Sin is an example of a python spirit. It will become bigger than you. <laughs> no matter how big you think you are, if you give it place, it will swallow you and it will expand to completely destroy you. But depression is a boa constrictor. It wraps itself around you and squeezes till it breaks your bones and your resistance. Some of us have been attacking pythons when our problems actually are with boar constrictors. It doesn't kill you initially, it just wraps itself around you. I'll give you an example. Depression. When it starts, it starts as melancholy. Then you go and play that your favorite song that accentuates your pain. Amen. You actually start a pity party. You know, you know, feeling sorry for yourself can be nice at first. For the first few hours or days, it's therapeutic. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. God doesn't love me. God doesn't care. See me, God, and all my mates are married. Look at me. And, and at first, it feels therapeutic, right? Right? But what's happening is that snake is wrapping itself around you. And you're allowing it. And when it's in place, it starts to squeeze. Then comes the pain. Then comes the paralysis. Then comes the loss of vision and loss of focus. I want you to open your mouth and say, Father, Lord, every boar spirit, every serpentine spirit attacking my life, destroy in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Every serpentine spirit. One of the ways a boar constrictor works, it works two ways. It can break your bones. We talks about breaking your structure. It can break your habits. Break your schedule of prayer. It can break the system and structures God has placed in your life. Or it can suffocate you. It can cause you to pass out from suffocation. Cut off your air supply. Say, Lord, every serpentine spirit... Working in Olumide Israel is Yahweh's life. Expose and destroy tonight. God, I shake off the beast into the fire. I shake off the beast into the fire. I shake off the beast into the fire. I shake off the snake into the fire of the Holy Ghost. I shake it off. 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 Father, break that spirit of my life tonight. Break that spirit of my life tonight, oh God. Father, destroy that spirit, oh God. Erase that spirit, oh God. That spirit that gives rise, oh God, to melancholy and frustration and indiscipline and bad eating habits. That causes my productivity, oh Father God. To be destroyed and wiped out, oh God. That causes procrastination. That causes procrastination. Causes me to push to tomorrow what I should do today. Even though I know I will suffer for it. Destroy in the name of Jesus.
Father, deliver me. Deliver me, oh God. It ends tonight. Like you saved us from sin. Like you saved us from addictions of other kinds. This is no less devilish. The God who can deliver from pornography can deliver from depression. The God who can deliver from fornication can deliver, oh God, from depression. Set us free. Set us free. Set us free. Set us free, oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. We just want to continue to go before the Lord. The Bible says in Joel chapter 2, Render your heart, not your garment. It's so easy to, to tear out your garment. Amen. But when you talk about the heart, it's something that God can give us the grace to do. We cannot do it on our own. So even as the music is going on a low note, we want to go back before the Lord and say, Father, my heart, I give you back my heart. May you deal with my heart. Father, we thank you, Lord Almighty God. Father, I'm coming before you, Lord Almighty God, with the heart, Almighty God, that you have created, Lord Almighty God, that anything, Lord Almighty God, that is not for you, Lord. Father, remove my career, mercy. May you purify my heart, Lord Almighty God, that I may see what you want me to see, Lord. That I may perceive what you want me to perceive. That I may be who you want me to be, Lord Almighty God. Everything, Lord Almighty God, that is contrary to that which you have given unto me, Father. Oh, Maria Baba Sikeria Mandere Babosika. Father, create inside me a clean heart and a right spirit within me, Lord Almighty God. That I will be the man you want me to be, Lord. I will be a servant you want me to be, Lord Almighty God. Anything that has come to distract what the Lord has put inside me, anything that is robbing me, Almighty God, Father, blot it out. That your will shall be done, Lord Almighty God. I surrender my heart before you, Lord. I surrender my heart before you, Lord Almighty God. Only before you, Lord Almighty God. That Lord, I will be like you, Lord Almighty God. <laughs> oh, Father, forgive me, Lord Almighty God, for allowing things that I was not supposed to allow in my heart, for keeping things I was not supposed to keep in my heart. Father, Lord Almighty God, for every blockage in my heart, Remove, clear my heart, Lord Almighty God, that your will will continue to be done, Father. Nevertheless, my will, Father, but your will be done, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Give me my Bible. As we are still praying before the Lord. There was a time Paul says, I count everything done except the excellency of the word of God. So we are going before the Lord and saying, Lord, everything is useless. Let's go to Philippians. Praise be to the Lord. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Thank you, Lord. We want to use this as a prayer point. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 reads, That I may know him and the power of his his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made confirmable unto his death. Hallelujah. 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 Something God, Jesus died for. Is my life worthy Jesus dying for? All I'm crucifying him even more by the way and the standard that I'm living. We just want to say, Lord, I want my life to be an example for what you died for. Amen. Hallelujah. May you raise your, your, your voice unto the Lord. And say, Lord, my life has got to be a good example of why you died for me. Father, we thank you, Lord Almighty God. We are coming before you, Lord, once again in humble adoration. That Father Jesus died for us, Lord Almighty. And my prayer today, tonight, this morning is, my life, Lord Almighty God, has got to be worthy that Jesus died for me. Has got to reflect that death. And the resurrection of the Lord Almighty God. That even as we pray, as we pray, Lord Almighty God, day by day, night by night, Lord Almighty God. Father, your will will continue to be done in our lives. Father, Lord Almighty God, that your death, Lord Almighty God, will mean something in our lives today. That your death and your resurrection, Father, will mean something in our lives today. Even those that will look at us, Lord Almighty God, let them see the power of the resurrection of Jesus. Let them see the greatness of God. Let them see you in our lives. Let them see you, Lord Almighty God, in the way we live, in the way we do things, Lord Almighty God. We are coming back to you, Lord Almighty God, that my life, my God, will say something good about the resurrection of the Lord. My life will confirm the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by power, not by mighty, but by the spirit of a living God. Father, we thank you, Lord Almighty God, as we come before you even in humble adoration, thanking you, Father, for dying for us on the cross appreciating that death for us Lord appreciate almighty God the benefit that came with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that we may know him and the power of your resurrection father through our living through our lifestyles Lord almighty God father we want to thank you once again for your son Jesus dying for us on the cross had it not been for him dying Lord almighty God Where would we be at a time as this? Where would we be, Lord Almighty God? Father, speak to each and every one of us, Lord. That, Father, Lord Almighty God, our lives will be prayerful, Lord. We will remain in that secret place of the Most High God. Nothing shall terminate the presence of God in our lives. Nothing shall rob our prayer time, Lord. Our time of intimacy with Christ. Nothing will rob us, Lord, from doing that which you have appointed us to do. Father, this is my desire to, to, to this morning, Lord, that we will remain focused unto you, Lord. Nothing, Lord, shall hinder us 
Father, if we have to do anything, we do anything concerning what you have called us to do, Lord Almighty. Anything less than that, Father, is not our portion. May you give us the grace to keep on focusing unto you. May you give us the grace, Lord Almighty God, to remain strong in, the, in, in what you have called us to be, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Because you are a powerful God. May you continue to give us the grace. May you continue, Father, to open our eyes to see where you are taking us, Lord. Father, may you give us that ability. Oh my God, that we may discern and respond to the word of God. Not only hear us, but also do us of the word. That Father, even when the Lord is coming back, Lord, every one of us will be in that number. None shall be left, Lord Almighty God. Have mercy on us, Lord Almighty. Father, with you, all things hold. In Jesus, all things are made perfect. Father, we continue to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Before I hand the mic, we just want to appreciate what God has already done before us. It's one thing, you know, the ten lepers, only one came back and said thank you. Want to thank God where he has taken us right now. Open your mouth and begin to just thank God. Father, we thank you, Lord Almighty God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for taking us this far. Had it not been for your grace, Lord, where would we be at a time as this? What would we be doing, Lord, at a time as this, Lord Almighty God? We are thanking you, Father, for teaching us, Father, for giving the people of God the revelation, the words of wisdom, words of encouragement. Father, we thank you, Lord Almighty God, that you have given us this time and this opportunity to hear what you are saying to us, Lord. Father, Lord Almighty God, we thank you once again, Lord. We give you all the glory, Almighty God. We give you all the praise because you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy, you are worthy, Lord Almighty God. We lift our voices unto the Lord. To who praise is due. To who glory is due. Father, we thank you once again, Lord. Father, take us further. Give us the grace to keep on moving. Keep on flowing under the anointing. Keep on flowing, Lord Almighty God. Nevertheless, our will, but your will be done. The Bible says it's not by power, it's not by might, but it is by the Spirit of the living God. Father, we thank you, Lord Almighty. We thank you, God the Father. We thank you, Jesus the Son. We thank you, God the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, church. Let's give a clap offering unto the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be magnified. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord. I just want us to pray this prayer for ourselves individually. After everything that has happened here, I want us to pray that God will make us a house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. I want us to pray that a God house will make prayer. us an epicenter of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. Lord, a make us a house of prayer. prayer. Make me a house of prayer, Lord. Lord make me a house of prayer. Let prayer arise from this temple, make Lord. Make me a house of prayer. Lord, I pray a house of prayer. that you make me a house of prayer, Lord. Lord. Make me a house. Make me a house of prayer, Lord. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house of prayer, Lord. A house of prayer. Let the fire on my altar never Lord, burn out. Never burn out. Let the 
let the fire on my altar never burn out let the fire on my altar never burn out let the fire on my altar let it never burn out lord let prayer arise from this temple god let prayer arise from this vessel lord Make me a house of bread, Lord. Never burn. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a vessel. Make me a honor in your house, of God. That I will forever be commanded. Make me a house of prayer, Lord. Make me a house of prayer, Lord. Let fire constantly burn. Make me a house of prayer. Come on, declare Declare to yourself. I will be a house of prayer. 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 A house of prayer. The fire on my altar will never burn out. The fire on my altar will never burn out. The fire on my altar will never burn out. Lord, ignite a fire in me. May the fire of my altar And every burning flame, Lord. Set me a place for you, Lord. May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. May be a house of prayer. Now I want us to take us that, uh, take that same prayer and pray it for this church. And if you're not from this church, pray it for your church. 
that God will make this house, that God will make this temple a house of prayer in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you will make Ecclesia Kingdom Movement a a house of prayer. Father, Lord, that your fire will forever be found on this altar, oh God. Make this a a house of prayer, Lord. Make this a, a house of prayer, Lord. Let your fire continue to burn in this house, in this temple, Lord. Father, Lord, Make this house a house of prayer, Lord. Make this house. Make this temple. Make this house. Make this temple. A house of prayer. Let your fire be found on this altar, Lord. Father, Lord, we use this as a point of contact for every church represented in this house. We pray in Jesus' name that let your fire be found on this altar. Let your fire burn on this altar. Make this house a house of prayer, oh God. Make this house of prayer. A house of prayer. Now, I want us to intercede for the body of Christ worldwide and take the same prayer that God will set us as a body. A blaze that God will make his body a house of prayer that God will make his temple worldwide a house of prayer Lord we intercede and and Make us as a body a house of prayer. Let your fire never burn out, Lord. For the church worldwide. Father Lord, I pray. That we will be the house of prayer. Ignite a fire within us worldwide. For the church in China, let it a boshete and the baka. It come on a boko da 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 shata. Let a boko da 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 boshata. It come on da da boshete. For the church in Israel, let it a da boko man da da boshata. Let ke ya da da bo. Make us a house of prayer, Lord. He come on our shete yada da boka. He come on our boshite yada da boka. Set us a place for you, Lord. Let us a boshite yada da boka. Let us yada da da boshite yada boka. Make us a house of prayer, Lord. He come on da 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 shite yada da boka. Fire on our altar, never burn out. May the fire on our altar. May the fire on our altar never burn out. 
Make us a house of bread. May the fire on our altar never burn out. May the fire on our altar never burn out. May the fire on our altar never burn out. Make us a house of prayer. May the fire on our altar never burn out. May the fire on our altar never burn out. May the fire on our altar never burn out. Make us a house of prayer. Make us a house of prayer, Lord. Make us a house of prayer. And let the fire on our altars never burn out. This we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. This message has been brought to you freely by Ecclesia Kingdom Movement. To support our ministry and partner with us to increase our impact across the world, reach more people and take advantage of more platforms, we encourage you to consider making a monthly gift of any amount or one-time gift towards the work of the gospel. We'd like to thank you in advance for your support and we value your partnership.